Oh, baby foot clan, we have real football to talk about today. We are breaking down the Thursday night matchup. We're answering all your questions. Big who to start questions are happening now, and we've got you covered. Make sure you subscribe right now because this season's going to be awesome. We're going on a ride together, and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome in. The fantasy footballers back once more. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. Happy to be with you. Wednesday episode of the show. We've got full deucers. Full deucers in the house. Al Borland, Papa Josh, the Falcon. Feeling all right today in the building. In the building, yeah. It is ironic that the one day you say we have full deucers. No Kyle today on the on the microphone. Thank goodness. Yeah, I mean, is he really a deucer? Not really. I mean, You take- need to be... In Deucer's Alley. Yeah. yeah. He's a deucer of another sort. He's on a plane. He's on his way here. We've got League of Record draft tomorrow. (laughs) we got so much tomorrow. I want to hear from the listeners because I've heard some, uh, you know, a a sprinkling of tweets and things like that about wanting more League of Record content in general. So I want to hear about that because last year the show – the show – oh, gosh – the show Yeehaw. moment, the show moment of the year was the Papa Josh in my situation, and I'm not forgetting you, Al. You're awful. Um, but then, like, we were able to put up on the website, like the the matchup, and mm-hmm. and so I want to know if people want some more League of Record content. I mean, I think- uh, things like that are always going to be split. You're going to be fifty fifty. Half the people out there are going to be like, "That's awesome," and half are like, "I don't care about your league, man." That's my guess. So we'll share some pictures from our uh, League of Record draft on Thursday, and uh, it's going to be fun. Going to break down the Thursday night game today. Oh, we we're talking talk- real oh. football. We're going to talk about real football on the show. we got news to talk about. We'll see if Mike can will one more contract I into gave, existence. I gave it my best shot yesterday, everyone. You have been tweeting I, relentlessly trying to get this done. I think I'm out of ammo. No, you're out of days, too. I mean, you're running out of... <laughs> uh, not on the Joe Burrow schedule. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Jamar Chase is a big topic, especially if you haven't drafted yet, or even if you have and you added him to your roster, you don't know if you're going to be able to play him. So stupid. <laughs> it's so stupid. Here's some uh, League of Record talk. Uh, Mike, you have the second pick in I our do. draft. Thanks to the lottery, I uh, have the uh, pick just behind you. Our keeper system... Most of the great players are kept. There's a handful, just a few, yeah. monster great players that fall back into the draft. There's two of them in particular, A.J. Brown, Jamar Chase. With the Jamar Chase holdout, he might fall to you, Mike, and guess who I play week one? You, baby! <laughs> Go ahead, get that Jamar Chase and sit him on your bench and play me. I think he will. <laughs> I think he would do that. Um, it's not a one-week game. No. Well, all I care about is our matchup. Okay. We okay. have week one rankings up on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. You can go check those out. 20,844. That was the final count for the – That's yes, awesome. That is the all-time record for the Megala Bowl, and I had my Megala Bowl draft last night. Um. I let my son handle some of the duties, who's my co-manager in League of Record. He is uh, acclimating to the advanced fantasy football world. He's got more and more into it. He's He did all right. <laughs> he, he, he made one one kind of interesting decision. We were very uh, – we had Jameer Gibbs in the first round, and then we went some – you know, he went like a couple wideouts. We got Marvin Harrison, and, and then he took a tight end. So when he's coming back in the fifth round or fourth round for a, another running back – and pretty much the only other running back we got on the roster was oh. David Montgomery. Oh, man, all in. So we're going big, big Lions. I, someone on Twitter told me the Lions were winning the Super Bowl. 
Yeah, that is a fact. Yeah. You, that read, you read that too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, somebody tweeted that out. <laughs> um, so, yes, thank you, everybody, uh, for joining the Megalobowl. It's going to be fun this year. And then the community for in-season tools and resources, including the brand-new Ultimate Dashboard, is at jointhefoot.com. Uh, initial feedback has been very positive, and we're going to keep adding more and more to the Ultimate Dashboard. If you want to know what that is, it is an in-season lineup optimizer. It'll help you find spot starts. It'll help you find waiver pickups, a custom team news feed, and it's all synced to your league if you're on uh, ESPN Public Leagues, if you're on Yahoo, or if you're on uh, Sleeper. Those are the three supported right now. You can also manually add your team, and that optimizer uh, is going to keep getting better and better, and that's brand new for 2024. Gives you a pretty handy news feed of what's going on with your your specific players as well. Absolutely. Like if you have Kyle Pitts. Ooh, oh, let's my talk gosh. news. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. Oh, man. I, I'm I, hungry for more news. <laughs> you beat me to the joke, Jason. I had to. I had to get you there. You jumped on that grenade. I gave, I gave you, Andy such a great segue to the wrong segment. You pulled the pin and you just rolled the grenade on the ground. But at, the, your end, own bunker. Ki- at the end, I kicked it away a little bit. So just Only scarring. blew your leg off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we are, uh, we've got hungry for more. <laughs> We're heading into week one. And I chose an interesting player for this week's segment. I'm hungry for more. Oh, you and me both, brother. Brandon Ayuk of the San Francisco 49ers. Why? Yeah. Why do I want more? Because you've had none. Because I want a wide receiver one if he's going to be treated like a wide receiver one with the uh, the purse strings and the trade offers. I mean, it, we didn't talk about it on the show, but it came out that the Browns offered Amari Cooper in a two and a three for the opportunity to vastly – Maybe not overpay, but just to write a big contract yes. for Brandon Ayuk. And Ayuk didn't want to go to Cleveland. And he didn't want to go to New England, who also wrote a big check. And, you know, the the Steelers weren't willing to give up pickings on the way back. So San Francisco, that deal didn't come to fruition. Ayuk he even came out and said over the last month he kind of made it hard on the team because I think he didn't know what to do. I genuinely think it was a little bit of like, contract posturing and then you get to the standstill and it was like well i guess i'm gonna just keep holding well, and got, then eventually you just sign the contract you have that pot odds thing where you're like no i said i said i was gonna do this it's like ah and let's shoot. be honest players get the chance to miss camp who doesn't want to miss some camp i've i've heard they like to miss it so i want when i say i'm hungry for more brandon it's the it's the level up i want to see him have his first wide receiver one season of all time he's never done it he may have played like a wide receiver one and gets paid like a wide receiver one, but in fantasy, he has not accomplished that goal. Um, he was so efficient last year. It was one of the things we brought up in the offseason about maybe a little bit of a, whoa, be careful with Brandon Ayuk because, you know, you can't have that many big plays happen year after year. And, you know, we let all wide receivers in fantasy points per target. And so that level of efficiency led to wide receiver 14. Missed the game. He was right on the edge of wide receiver one yeah, points I mean, was, per game. I'm trying to look it up real quick, but he was at 13.2. Is that right? 13.2 points per yes. game, and he missed the game. I mean, that, so that's right on the, the cusp. But I want top ten, Mike. That's we'll upgrade it. I'll I'll let you know if that would have been top ten. But what do you what do you think the chances are? I mean, we can want anything, but do you believe that Brandon Ayuk will be a, you know, he, look, he's been a top fifteen wide receiver the last yes. two seasons. Yes. How confident are you that he is a top 15 wide receiver this season? Pretty confident, and I do think that there's a chance that, like, we look at that offense and we we look at it with uh, the chart of of targets and you say, okay, some go to Ayuk, some go to Debo, Kittle gets some, McCaffrey gets some, and that's how you look at the offense. I do think the dial could be turned. I think this team could support Brandon Ayuk taking a step forward and Kittle and Debo maybe taking a step back if this team is planning for Debo to, to leave next year. It could be time for Brandon Ayuk to be uh, you're super alpha, right, on this roster. So, hungry for more Brandon Ayuk. I have uh, I've been resistant to get on that train where I believe he could be a top ten wide receiver, but uh, the market says he he has the well, capability. Top ten it will be rough if if the 49ers keep throwing at the pace that they they do. They're incredibly Dead efficient. Last. Yeah, <laughs> they're incredibly efficient when they do. Uh, and looking at it. Uh, 13.2, I think it puts him like 
11th or 12th in points per game. But that's, I mean, that's point one behind Jamar Chase from last year. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to go with my hungry for more, uh, a very different, same position, but very different situation. It is a rookie who has gotten not a lot of love. Luke McCaffrey, rookie wide receiver for the Washington Commanders. This is a player I liked the college film of. I liked the production, 13 receiving touchdowns, a 37% dominator rating. And then they traded away Jahan Dotson. And when that happened, I thought, look, this must mean Luke McCaffrey's having a good camp. He's he's doing what they wanted him to do. He was a third round pick. This is not like, you know, I, I know he wasn't the Christian McCaffrey brother top ten NFL selection, but he also wasn't, you know, Mr. Irrelevant Day three seventh round pick either. This was an investment the team made into him. And then they trade away last year's first Jahan Dotson. And I'm thinking, okay, he's showed enough. And then a report comes out right after that that's like, I don't know if he's going to get run. And so I was, I was a little scared off of it because I'm always looking for those guys like Malik Washington and Luke McCaffrey, those, those rookie wide receivers that might just sneak into that starting lineup. But then the official Washington Commanders depth chart comes out, and lo and behold, Luke McCaffrey is listed ahead of Diami Brown on that chart at least. I mean, TBD until the games are sure. played. But he's listed as the starter, which – he should be. He's the next best. You know, Terry is the one, and they've been saying all offseason they're looking for their two. I think they have it. So I, I would love to see Luke McCaffrey succeed. I would love to see him start. And we got an early uh, offseason breakfast narrative, boys. Uh oh. Yeah. Is he having breakfast with Jaden Daniels? Well, listen to this early Donuts report about Jaden Daniels uh, from an ESPN article. It says Daniels clocks in around 5 45 a.m. It is what he did at LSU, too. Rookie. Receiver Luke McCaffrey has been joining Daniels in Washington. The two oh. players watch film and then head to the practice bubble and walk through plays. Rookie, okay. rookie connection at breakfast. At, did we get confirmation though, that did, they're eating together? Because no. I think you were trying to. I was. I'm trying to push it in breakfast. I think. I mean, they gotta eat. They're, you they got a whole day they, of practice. At least like a, a breakfast bar. They split one. Or I something. think they're sharing a breakfast bar. They or it's like a protein something. shake, maybe. They have a, their protein quote has got to be very high. Uh, at least a gram yeah. per pound. Um, LMC is the pick. I like it. It and he's a fascinating player. Of uh, Jay, just some more context in there. He started as a quarterback in college, and before making the transition to being a wide receiver, so really only two years as a wide receiver, but really strong production. And I, I mean, it's real narrative street, but I like the fact, like, uh, that he played quarterback. I think it gives you a different advantage out there if you know how a quarterback is seeing the field. Is this the Julian Edelman narrative? A little bit. The Travis Kelsey narrative. The Mohamed Sanu narrative? A, a little bit. <laughs> yep. A little bit. Just the more knowledge you can get about the entirety of the football team, I the think Josh better. Jacobs narrative? Did you know that? Did, really? He was a high school quarterback. Jacobs was? Yeah, he was a high school I did quarterback. I know that Are you one. thinking of Mon nope. Montgomery was, too? Oh, that is who I was thinking yeah, of. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. That's David why I didn't know David yeah. Jacobs. David was a Montgomery was on an interview the other day. Wait, wasn't he talking to Amon Ra? He was talking remember. to Amon Ra. Was it that it? Yes. That that show's hilarious because Amon Ra and his brother are on it, and I would say about half the show is them just mocking each other's teams and how they think their teams suck. But yes, Montgomery was like, oh, they're they like, were, what'd you throw for? And it was yeah. like, oh, like two hundred yards. You know, like he they threw were, for like two hundred yards. They were dunking on him. Um. All right. So Mike, you got a wide receiver for us I as have. well. Hungry for more? I have been pushed into this <laughs> corner, so I will accept it with uh, with hunger in my belly. It is T. Higgins, current wide receiver one. This is kind of a hungry for what's left. <laughs> yeah. Lots of opportunity. Lots of leftovers here. Yeah, that's a leftover situation. T. Higgins has, if you've been with the show over the last few years, T. Higgins has destroyed my soul in the league of record for multiple years. And with these injuries not being as productive as I think that he should be, because I do believe that he is a, a great player. But since since his counterpart, Jamar Chase, has come into the league, we've seen T without him five times. And in those five games, it is pure domination. It's from 10 points a game up to nearly 17, a, a climb of two receptions per game. Uh, yardage jumps up almost or no over 40 yards per game so it the fact that he it, that's a small sample of course but it's we're we're backed into this 
situation. You are thumbs upping something. What oh, do we, man. What do we got? Josh oh, Jacobs. Man. Oh, also, Jacobs was? Uh, high school dual threat quarterback. All right. Woo. Wow. Okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we figured it out. I love it. Um, I had moved on, but Al found it. So credit to Al. Still trying to make up for last year. I love player who has become <laughs> professional running back. Was a dual threat at the quarterback position. Weird. Weird how that happened. Yeah, just uh, pocket passer, David Montgomery. <laughs> but, like, T. Higgins, to me, had already been shaping up to be a good pick at ADP. Regardless. You're saying with Chase there. Yes. Yeah, abso Re regardless absolutely. Regardless of everything that was – like, Jamar Chase was still a top three pick. T. Higgins was looking like a great value where he was going. You didn't have to overpay where it was, you know, the last couple years – uh, last year, you know, Jalen Waddle and T. Higgins both being drafted really, really high expectations through the ceiling, and now they aren't there. And now you, now we have all this weird, ambiguous stuff. Maybe you get a freebie week one. I mean, no, I think no matter what, you probably do because the reports I saw were it, now it's Jamar Chase could be trending to not playing. Of I'm going to hold out if I don't get a contract. But even if he gets the contract, what do you do if you're the Bengals? A guy put him who, right in that starting lineup. I don't, I don't oh, know yeah, if you do. Oh, yeah, you do, but I mean... I'm, as a full-time player, I don't know that he'll get his full allotment of snaps. That that could be true. It could be... Uh, there could be some consequences from that, but I'm sitting here just like... There was a time this offseason was dominated by not paying T. Higgins, and here we are with Jamar Chase. Yeah. Like, this is not the first wide receiver that's been unhappy with this team. He just... Higgins had to sign his deal, and he's going to be moving on after the year. But the Bengals said, you know, Joe Burrow, we got you locked up, and we're just going to... Play around with the wide receiver position, it, and it, it's a mess. There, there is a chart that if you mess around, you find out. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that they're about they're they're hitting the uh, the, the apex of the find out part. It's unfortunate. The Bengals organization has uh, they've referred to that chart many times. Yeah, <laughs> the Bengals organization, well, the, the Bengals team as a whole, their ADP wise, I think they're like they were one of my favorite, most undervalued. I think T is undervalued which I still feel weird just calling him T. Um, I don't know why. I, th I think Burrow <laughs> yeah. is undervalued. I personally think Zach Moss is undervalued. Yeah, and so I wanted is. to talk about it before, but I was so scared by this situation, the vibes, and the fact that why aren't you paying your players? But to each their own. All right, that was Hungry for More presented by Uber Eats. Get almost, almost anything for game day, like tomorrow, delivered with Uber Eats, official on-demand food delivery partner of the NFL order now. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. So we talked about Chase. That is the latest news that it's trending towards the possibility. And again, this is media negotiation tactic 101. But it's getting, I mean, we got limited time. And the news today is Chase might not play. Like he might yeah. not play this weekend. Or he's willing to not play. Like he's not willing to come back and and take snaps without a deal. And so, you know, I, I'm with – I'm not going to not draft Jamar Chase. Yeah, uh, if, just, it, if it's a heads-up and a full redraft between – How uh, far? Amon Ra, I'm taking Amon Ra. You know, if it's uh, – if you go further, if it's, if it's Jefferson or Chase, I'm taking Jefferson. And in our league of record, for for what it's worth, the top two names on the board are A.J. Brown and Jamar Chase. I do not th – I think it's appropriate to take Brown over Chase regardless of the contract situation. Yeah, I think that's this fair. This is – we cannot be living in this world where, like, everything's been perfect for Jamar Chase every single game of every single season. This is a player who – I mean, what's his highest fantasy finish at the position? I think it was his rookie, rookie year, year five. He was five as a rookie, 12 and then 13. He's missed games two straight years. So, uh, you know, we know what he's capable of, but there's really no reason you can't make a decision and say, I like A.J. Brown more. No, I, I think when you're talking about those tier one guys, the A.J. Brown, uh, the Amon Ra, for me, I, I'm a little hesitant with the Justin Jefferson, but I get it because he's What the about best. Garrett Wilson? But because I feel like that's in that's the same the, category. That's the tier, the Garrett Wilson, Olave, Drake wow. London, those guys. I'm not willing to do that. Okay. I'm not because I, I, I can't imagine them I not getting I would squint a little bit at Wilson. Chase the rest of them the I'm with field. you. I just feel like you, you know, if you miss one week, whatever, you're going to have players miss a couple of games through the season. It sucks that it's week one, but whatever. Okay. All right, we have uh, news. Uh, guess what, guys? <laughs> Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts is dealing with a hamstring injury. 
And it was reported just now, but apparently it's been going on for a couple of weeks and hasn't affected him too much. I don't know how the, man, I'm not a doctor, but like if my hamstring, it's either bugging me or it's not. It's not like, yeah, it's like 50%. I'm out here practicing with 50% hamstring level. I don't know how this works, but I, you don't want to hear this, especially for a player whose major excuse since his rookie, you know, quote unquote, breakout thousand yards, but didn't get. Touchdowns. Did you just quote unquote a thousand yards? Yeah, a, yeah, because it wasn't a good season for fantasy. It's a fair. Like it, it's a fair quote. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna approve. He had a thousand yards as a rookie. I'm and two it. touchdowns and two touchdowns. I'm just saying, no one was happy. The people that drafted, the, the people that drafted Kyle Pitts as a rookie. I'm with you. If they you had finish a bust at, pick. If you finish at seven, at tight end, it's not a breakout. No. Um. Anyways, my wow. point here is, you guys are rough. since that time. All the excuses have been injury related. Oh, it was the it was the what was a PCL head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Yeah, yeah, and then it's like oh he he couldn't turn left or whichever direction because he was coming back from that knee injury. Oh yeah, the Zoolander. Yeah, and then um and now the hamstring. So it it's hamstring. It's not what you want to hear. Yoo-hoo. I was finally, despite all of those comments, Mike. Uh huh. I was finally ready to pull that trigger, in some of these drafts because he he does represent this tremendous upside with Kirk Cousins. But now I have pause again. Because if you're dealing with a hamstring, what are you going to do? Two tight ends? You ready to go double tight end to start the year? I don't want that game. Oh, I, I get it. I'm, I'm just over here still blown away that 1,000 yards as a rookie tight end is not a breakout for you guys. It's not a breakout fantasy football season. That's what I meant. It's it, So it is for you. You, you, you think that was he, a breakout season? For the – has Sex. Kyle Pitts broken out in fantasy football? No, in football. Okay. Don't that we're a fantasy football show? <laughs> I feel like also he that is the second tight end ever as a rookie to hit a thousand yards. How many games? A very, did he play? very good. Rookie Seventeen. Season. Okay, he got an extra extra game. We don't care about that for the all time. As <laughs> soon as we add a seventeenth game, everybody can do it. <laughs> Whoa, you guys are just blow torches. What if him? it's eighteen games? Is you going to give the next guy the same credit? Yeah, if he hits a thousand. Oh my gosh, <laughs> fifty games. Um, it's been a long time since those days, a long time, three seasons. Let's do it on the field, Mr. Pitts. I don't know. Does it change your opinion of this hamstring injury, Mike? Uh, you want to pull the trigger? It makes me more concerned. Okay. Marshawn Lloyd didn't practice after practicing a couple days. They're giving him a day off. We don't know how. They said it was part of the plan and that it was it's gonna on take time. time. Like it was, it was scheduled to miss it was not a it's it's good to hear that it wasn't like he went out practiced hurt himself worse it was this was the plan of bringing him back when he's going to practice when he's not I don't know that he plays week one I don't think he does I yeah. think he might miss a couple weeks and then the the compounded news here is the other backup running back for Green Bay oh my Emmanuel goodness. Wilson was limited Tuesday with a hip injury and now their dual threat quarterback yeah, is going to go ham I believe Josh the Jacobs has the most total touches at running back over the last three years he has been the most workhorse capable and the team has come out and said literally yeah that's what he does he's fine if we have to do that we'll just do it well, they have to do it over the first <laughs> over the first few weeks Josh Jacobs will be very good he, I don't know how he's not a workhorse all of the running backs on this roster are injured except for him and if you tell me that the biggest threat to Josh Jacobs on a competitive playoff team is a currently injured rookie that has to acclimate and become a part of the offense, I think that's going to last a lot longer than a few weeks, personally. Yeah, it, it might. was a late, late surge. I don't incredible like incredible surge for Josh yeah, Jacobs. But I'm in. Yeah, I just my worry is the second half of the year. Ty Chandler has been announced as the kick returner for the Vikings. Right. That's not the fun one. The Bengals announced Chase Brown as the kick returner for the for the Bengals. That's not the fun one. Blake Corum was listed as the primary kick returner. Ah! Oh, my God. Ah! His value is over. You can't draft Blake Corum. We're all going to ah! die. He's returning kicks? Oh, man. Why even be on the team? Yeah. You know what? I'd be a lot happier if, if it was flipped. <laughs> if it was Kyron returning kicks and Corum returning punts. Because the kickoff is safe now. The kickoff is completely changed. So... The punts, you got to get knocked out. Well, you Maybe. fair catch. Yeah. So just, if just it's a fair catch, have, have anybody else do it. Short hands. 
You, okay. tr- you trust his okay. hands. Yeah. Okay. No, you know you that that's not wrong. This you, is not even news. I mean, the ro- <laughs> a rookie returning kicks is called NFL football. It's yeah. news in the fact that people wanted to react to they should have Kyren. reacted. They should have reacted to Kyren. Then you should react to this. No, not at all. He's a rookie. He's a backup. He should return kicks. Your starting running back. Okay, let me ask you this. Okay. Name all the other starting workhorse running backs that return punts in the NFL. Go. I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> I could do some research, but it's going to be no, very no, no. low. Go ahead. What now? Saquon now, returning punts? Just, just to be clear. You, Jameer Gibbs returning punts? Just to be clear, you do... You can't just say player. You have to say running back because of, yeah, because of Antonio Brown or yes. those guys. Oh, starting, totally different. Yes, starting running starting, back. Starting <laughs> yes, it starting is different. Waters. How is it different? Because the workload on a workhorse running back, you're not giving your wide receiver, you know, 22 carries a game. It's a big difference. That's why you've never okay. seen it. This is a story because no one's ever done it. I can't think of other than you telling me Kyron, who wasn't their starter when he did it, did it last year. I can't think of another running back. In fact, if you went through the top. Uh, the, the top five rounds of running backs, I don't think you're going to find one. Oh, so, we, I mean, we will see. D- this we will see. Kyron returning kicks tells me it's a committee. That's what it is. It's going to be a committee. In, in, okay. And I, I'm not just saying this to be like hot takey on the show. I traded Kyron away for Gibbs in our league of record after the news. And there are yeah, those out there that, that think that some people reacting to that news is absolutely crazy. And that's fine. Kyron may go out, and by the way, he plays Gibbs Sunday Night Football Week One. We're going to put That's him to the fun. test. He may go out and just light the league on fire again, or it could be a committee with Corum and Ronnie could. Rivers. So, where where have you moved Kyron rankings wise? Like in your head, where what tier is he in now? Now that he is guaranteed in a committee, what do you see as his? I I put Gibbs above him. I mean, well, Ky- Gibbs was yeah, already Gibbs, above him. Yeah. Uh, Gibbs was already above him for all three of our, our rankings. No, no, I, have, I, I have Kyron one spot. Yeah, I, I was going to say I had Kyron ahead before, so I was just telling you where like, I adjusted. Let me take a look. Let me get some number, other I'll give names. give you some names. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Travis Etienne. Etienne's above him, for sure. Uh, let's go Derrick Henry. Uh, I will, in a standard, go Henry. The others, I'll still go Kyron. Okay. Devon Achan. I'd probably take the shot on Achan. I have him one spot behind HN. I have I have Kyron at ten, so this that's where I moved him. Okay, he's at ten. He's behind Barkley. He's behind Cook. He's behind HN. Rashad White, one spot behind Kyron. Wow, behind one Cook. spot behind Kyron. Okay, okay. Yeah, he's behind Cook for me. Okay, for me. So again, I'm not really happy. This whole conversation came up. <laughs> I real I'm really not because it's just too much airtime for the story that I didn't mean it to be. Like it, this sounds like I think Kyron is the worst player in the league. He's incredible. That's what I heard. He's number ten on my rankings, but. <laughs> It did move him. It did change him. Because my problem with Gibbs, right, is, ah, committee with Montgomery, right? You're, the hope of Kyron was you were going to get everything. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. What you got last year. And, again, he didn't have Cooper Cup for some of last year, too. Like, this is a competitive uh, red zone situation. So, uh, we'll find out very, very soon how stupid or smart or in between we all are on that decision. It's it's tough. You're looking for one little tweak as to who you're going to draft. Um, but Ty Chandler returning kicks, we knew he's behind Aaron Jones. Chase Brown returning kicks, we knew he was behind Zach Moss. So those are kind of they don't they don't. It actually makes me interested in Zach Moss. Just in what like Chase Brown and Ty Chandler with the new kick returns, and those players being committee backs where you were drafting them already. It's kind of cool when your guy's going to get an opportunity. It might be one. One touchdown extra a year, but if you are starting a committee back and they get one, that's cool. Yeah, I'm I'm fascinated to see because a lot of the coaches early this offseason, they were talking about putting more important, more talented players in that role because it's going to be a you know, a field position changer. Yeah, we're gonna, like, we'll th- see the have heard rumors, of course, all of these things, but like some teams are just saying Screw it. We're we're gonna boot it in the end zone, and we're gonna give the other give the team the good touchback because I think it's the thirty five. Yeah, I mean, they're I've I've heard teams say that we're just gonna we're gonna let all the other teams we're gonna see what happens over the first few weeks, but we'll just start people the, at the thirty five. The data that I've seen from preseason is that basically the shorter they kick it, the better it is for the kicking team on field position. I don't know why. Maybe it's not going to the right guy. I was playing. Uh, they just get there. It's like the and the the rules are, it's it's a pretty complex play now 
because if you you know you have the the area of the field where the ball has to hit and I was playing Madden with the boy and I didn't remember exactly how it works and so it, what do you get a penalty no no you don't get a penalty but like I'm, I'm on the 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 one or the two right R returning the kick and I'm like we're gonna let this thing roll right into the end zone but because it hit in the zone and then goes in the end zone then you're on the 20 yeah hmm. so yeah, because it, you're you're forced to return it yeah, that's it's, the, yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be weird it will and that's almost uh kind of been forgotten that that's what we're going to see debuted as well on Sunday in every game Thursday tomorrow yeah tomorrow um okay is there other news you guys have anything else breaking does Jamar Chase uh looking no able contract. to buy dinner tonight does he have what it takes still able to purchase dinner okay. just no new contract that was today's news and notes presented by USAA insurance learn more at usaa.com slash insurance gonna take a quick break and jump right into our matchup Also, with the news, the IU contract, all the contract stuff, the stuff that happened last year, I am taking the formal approach from this point on that anything goes. Oh, if I love it. If it's within the NFLPA, the CBA, for the players, and if the team can do it, the ownership, whatever, if it's permissible, it's it's. I'm not going to look down upon it from either side. Everything it is, is fair game, and I completely yes. agree with you. You, I, I don't, I don't judge the team for wanting to, you know, not pay guys, and I don't judge the players for wanting to get paid. The one place, though, is that I still think stupid decisions are stupid decisions. And so, for instance, let's say after week one, they give Jamar Chase everything he wanted, everything he wanted. Yeah, it's just dumb. It's just oh, yeah. you lost your player. Oh, yeah. You're I will a pass. very valuable player that could have helped you. Maybe you lose that game. Maybe you miss the playoffs because of one loss. Like, if you're going to pay him, maybe do it so he can play. Well, and, and, and that is stupid. But also maybe Jamar Chase exercising those options that he has is the only way he got paid. I mean, that is, that's the, the give and take of the situation that kind of, you know, I think players make mistakes. Lev Bell took a gamble, didn't work out, no. ruined his career. Yeah. Um, but then teams have made mistakes too. And it's the the Bengals in particular. Like when you think of the Bengals organization, I know things have gotten a lot better. Now. They made a Super Bowl run and they have great players now, but they historically have done. Po they've pooped the bet on yes, contracts for they have, players. They have ruined player relationships. And then I, completely different circumstance, I get it. Well, we And we didn't talk about it, but, but uh, Patrick Sertan of the Denver Broncos same draft class as Jamar Chase, same contract situation sitting behind him. They just made him the highest played, paid DB in in history. It is – yeah, I, I don't know. I think some of it has been teams with small windows to win with the players they got. Don't negotiate the way that teams building a new foundation do. The Broncos foundation, DJ Moore foundation in Chicago. Um, yeah, it could be. It, it's weird. It's interesting to me. Brandon Ayuk was super transparent about it. He came out and he's like, you know, not just said he made it more difficult than it needed to be at the end, but he, he said a squeaky wheel has to be silent sometime. Then you have to know when to squeak. I was just trying to find the balance. Like, yeah. that's got to be strange. It's got to be weird because you're putting your trust in your agent, right? You're not just making every decision yourself, but you're sitting at home wanting to be with your team going, is this yeah. the right thing? Is this not the right thing? Is this the right thing? Um, and we'll get to talk about it every year forever. <laughs> so there you go. Thursday Night Breakdown. I think Kyron's going to be good. I just want to, you know. Okay. He's going to be a good player. I mean, that's not what I heard. But. No, I know it's not. He's a backup. Uh, the Baltimore <laughs> Ray. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to dunk so <laughs> hard if it pans out that way. And ignore it if it doesn't. Oh. Baltimore at Kansas City. And Jay gonna alley oop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of you throw it up for the other. Uh, the DraftKings Sportsbook line for the Thursday night football kickoff game: Kansas City at home minus three. The over under is forty six and a half. Okay. And we saw these teams face off and score far fewer points in the AFC title game. Kansas City won seventeen to ten. And they had the ball for the majority of that game. It was a ball control situation. It was that running game. Baltimore turned it over three times. Kansas City defense, we know how good it was 
last year is not the same, but it should be very good. I'm happy to report that both teams have lost important defensive assets <laughs> um, because, you know, that was that was part of the problem with, with these two teams, especially Kansas City last year uh, with Snead there just locking down opposing ones. So happy he's gone because I want Patrick Mahomes to have to throw the ball a lot more. And even though I love Pacheco, uh, just do it in the passing game. I got bad news, though. The, the Ravens don't have any wide receiver ones, so <laughs> there's fair. he wouldn't have been needed. No, we get to see Derrick Henry in uh, Ravens purple. Very exciting. And we get to see what Zay Flowers has for a sophomore season. Mark Andrews should be back out there. Yeah, he was practicing. And, um, you know, so it's going to be very, very exciting. Very good defenses. Last year, like Jason said, we're hoping that, you know, Traditionally, when you come out of the gate, sometimes the offense takes a little while to get it going. We'll see what happens in this one. You're not going to have Hollywood Brown making his debut on the other side in terms of the injuries. But uh, let's start at the quarterback position. In week one, Mahomes has finished as the quarterback 4, 5, 14, 2, 1, and 7 and averages 3.3 passing touchdowns uh, in season openers yeah I mean this this is one of those where if you drafted Mahomes if you drafted Lamar obviously you're playing them there is no one you're going to start over them they were drafted to be started it's just a matter of expectation and and I do think that both of these quarterbacks have a good week one despite the you know last year's number one and number two in points per game defenses yeah I mean Lamar it's uh it was a lot to ask of him last year it was a tough game are we going to see the same? I mean, this question gets brought up. Like, to be fair, it's been brought up with Josh Allen a million times about hitting a wall of of the rushing totals being where you want them to be. Um, Josh Allen is how old? Twenty eight. Uh, let me uh, Lamar is twenty seven point six. Do you think at some point we're going Josh to Allen see Allen is twenty eight? Yeah. See the transition for Lamar to uh, protecting himself, or is that just going to be too integral to his game forever? I think it's probably going to be. He's, an, he's, a, he's a different type. Yes, he's a different type of runner. Um, he really doesn't trying seem to, to take the damage yeah, that like the Cam Newton and himself. Josh Allen. Like, these are guys that go. You know, it's like the around the goal line. They're smashing into defenders yeah. and running over them. You don't see. You know, Lamar's rushing touchdowns usually come from much further away, and he's avoiding players. So I think he'll run a little later than some of those big body guys. But it's certainly this year, I'm not worried about it at all. I do think it might be a pretty difficult debut for Isaiah Pacheco if he's not involved in the passing game, which he's, he, he could be, but we'll also see Samaj P. Ryan out there. This is a very tough matchup. Last year, the, the Ravens were number one against the run, and in the uh, in that divisional game, or sorry, in that uh, title game, he was 24 for 68, not efficient, scored a touchdown. You're obviously drafting him to start him. I'm not saying do, do anything differently. We're not we're not spot starting no, our, no. our Isaiah Pacheco's I, anytime yeah, soon. Yeah, it's just like Kyron. Like Kyron's week one matchup against the Lions. The Lions have been shutting down running back. He might have a bad week one. Don't don't overreact from one mm. matchup. I will. Well, <laughs> <laughs> this, this game it it's fantastic because it's a, it's an easy game of you're starting everybody. It's just what are the storylines that I am watching for? I mean, I think Isaiah. I think. Uh, but, Xavier Worthy is the big start sick question. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Xavier that's Worthy. Fair. That's um, fair. It, here's why you start Xavier Worthy. You want to call your shot and you want to see it on the first chance you have to watch football. If that is not the reason you're starting him, I would just, you know, you, you'd you yeah. didn't draft him probably as one of your top three wide receivers, in which case, you know, let, let, let the game much play out. Much different player, but I can tell you from personal experience last year of. Travis Kelsey missing week one and Sky Moore <laughs> been looking like a really good play and uh, he wasn't. He was actually he was very detrimental to your team uh, whenever you started him. So it's uh, if I I wouldn't be trying. I'm not forcing Worthy into the lineup, but the storylines I'm looking for does Rasheed Rice keep that target share up? What it, like how involved is Pacheco in the passing game? That's it's so huge. If and like especially if week one, like Samaj P. Ryan, who just got onto this team, is all of a sudden taking a bunch of third down snaps, you know, getting uh, somehow in the when they're on a, a, a passing attack drive, P. Ryan's getting a bunch of snaps. That would be 
pretty devastating. And then on the other side, what's going to go on here with Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely of – I don't think it's been a blaring siren from – What's been what we're hearing from the Ravens, but there's some murmurs of Isaiah likely might actually be the third weapon for this team of Andrews and Flowers. Their roles are secured. Bateman, every single time they talked about Bateman having a great day, he got injured. Then he got hurt. Like, oh, Bateman's finally back. Maybe oh, what may- a what a day of practice. And Rashad Bateman is hurt. Maybe that's their fault at this point. It's like it's a curse. It's like stop okay. talking nice about Bateman. Say some. Say some mean stuff. mean stuff about him. Get him out on the field. Break his spirit. <clears throat> Pull your I, best Dennis Allen. <laughs> I think Likely is a very, very good player. I do, I do too. I think he should be their third uh, primary target in this offense. And I don't think that comes at the expense of a Mark Andrews injury. They can play. This is a team that will play with a lot of two tight end sets, and he should be more involved. Um, tight ends generally uh, – have a little bit longer peak. Uh, I'm trying to think of how Andrew's athletic peak, how long that's going to last. Uh, I think, um, but he's got some time. I mean, he's almost 29. He's fine. But at, at tight end, you know, I think you're going to be okay. His uh, next gen stats of yards per separation. I believe he was number one um, last year. He he was really good. The injury makes us forget and makes us frustrated because yeah, it seems like it's every year. But please do not forget when Andrews is on the field he is as good a fantasy tight end as there is he's been the tight end two the first six weeks for three straight years correct so um no he, that's true Mike the storylines there how much they use Xavier Worthy um how much the tight ends get on the field together and then you it, know Zay Flowers is a good start in if, this game if you had Zay Flowers and Rushy Rice I could see a situation where you, those are literally your flex options or your last wide receiver option if you had to start one of this one of them in this game Rice. Rice. Yeah, I would as well. Home yeah. favored. Derrick Henry, how much work is he going to get? What is it going to look like for the uh, the Ravens in terms of what Henry was used to in Tennessee and, and what it looks like around the goal line is also going to be interesting to watch. Mm-hmm. But from a start standpoint, you're starting the running backs, the quarterbacks, Rice and Flowers, Andrews and Kelsey, and then you're just thinking about that flex option for Xavier Worthy. And um, yeah, they they gave us a they gave us a treat here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I see possible chance of thunderstorms. Please don't have delays. Okay. I'm gonna be waiting all day for this. Don't <laughs> don't delay this game. This is the first time we've done our league of record draft and then gone straight into week one. So, yeah, we're drafting tomorrow all together and then watching the game. That just means, and I'm gonna just put this out there. That means you might want to watch tomorrow's show on YouTube. I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna let you know. Because we're going straight from recording this show into our draft, and I'm not going to change clothes in between. Oh, okay. That's all I'm saying. I didn't saying. know where you were going. Okay. So, you got YouTube.com. Like king robe outfit coming? Uh-huh. All right. I don't know. TBD. I don't know what I got coming. Uh, anything else you want to talk about in the Thursday night preview? Nope. We'll take a quick break, answer some questions. All right, let's jump into the mailbag. Mailbag. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, um, we will. Ju- we have a voicemail question now. We do. All right. Let's jump in. Hey, ballers. This is Rody in Arkansas. Uh, so I took Bijan in the first, and then Drake London falls to me in the middle of the fourth. Do I try to trade one of those, or do I go all in on a Falcons offense with Kirk Cousins coming off the Achilles? Yeah. Appreciate it. Love the show. Later. So question is, Bijan was drafted in the first. Drake London fell to the fourth, <laughs> which is unbelievable value. That's not going all in on Drake No, if, you, if he falls to you. No, and normally in this studio, if you talk about a double Falcon, that's a clogged toilet problem. Right. Like that is a situation. A in double this, Falcon would be maybe you're calling a doctor. It, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's too much to wipe. There's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's too no, – that's, that's at least a two-roller. Uh, Full rolls. Yeah. But it, but yes, but here, if Drake, <laughs> Falcon, how does that make you feel knowing that you and your name on this show is oh, basically it's like a, a synonym? I wear it as a badge of honor. Okay. Oh yeah, man. man, that's good. He probably has to. Uh, he probably has to go. Um, but th- that's fine. No, I would. I'd let that play out. Especially, like if Kyle Pitts, this hamstring injury is 
if it is a factor, at least over the first portion of the season, Drake London, Drake London should be so good. Let me, he should be so good. I have a question. I'm going to submit All my right. own mailbag question because I think I need to hear your perspective on it. Okay. How long, how many games does it take for a player that has not been, you know, given the uh, whatever whatever the expression you want to use? Crown. Yeah, who is not like Drake London, mm -hmm. Garrett Wilson, mm -hmm. um, these players that we want and uh, Chris Olave, we want and expect them to take a step forward. We need them to be in the upper echelon, and we want to give them that. You know, the reason you hesitate about drafting Drake London a little bit is because you haven't seen that. How many games? Does it take for you to believe that you got the thing that you're hoping for? I wrote because, down my answer. Because one Wait, game, to believe in it in a positive way. Correct. Like okay. how many games of Drake London's success? Till I fully believe. Till you it's... say I, he is what we thought he was versus I just had a good, like, I mean, I looked at the, uh, uh, what was it? Um, in our last matchup, like you talked about Sky Moore having a big first game. Like you might have believed after one game Sky Moore was a, a good well, player. Nah, I believe talked about him not. Yeah. Oh, you said he did. Yeah, yeah, he did. Not. Oh, gotcha. I, that was the like don't play worthy week one. The point is, is there's lots of players that have big week one. Yes, Sammy Watkins. Sammy Watkins would come out and annihilate in week <laughs> one, and you're like, I got that dude, and then he's like, Gotcha. You guys remember what Sky Moore's <laughs> line was? Skymore's line from last year? Yeah, week one. With no Travis Kelsey. Uh, is it a zero burger? No. Okay. It is a zero reception burger okay. and one carry for four yards. All right. So you guys wrote down I your wrote answer down, on how many games yeah. it takes? I wrote down my answer for both directions for me to conclude that he is, he, uh, he is oh, the guy. Oh, I just went positive. I just, and then how many it would take for me to go, I'm out, and I, I'm going to take the L, and I'm not going to keep trying. What are your answers? For yes, my answer is one. Oh, I went. Now is that because three. of priors, though? I'm talking about neutral. Like, a, I went NBA GM. You're, you're saying one good Drake London game, and you've confirmed that he's good because he had those last year. I'm saying that if he comes out in week one, it, it, I mean, this really is the question for Drake London specifically. If if he comes out week one and has 12 targets, has one of the big games he's had before, I will be an early actor or believer. I will believe right off the bat. Now. That is, ironically, it's on the heels of saying, don't always do that. And I, I wouldn't always do that, but this is a situation where we are waiting to see the target market share of Kirk Cousins, the health of Kirk Cousins. And so if he comes out and has a big week one, I'm going to, I'm going to believe that that doesn't mean he's going to be consistent every week's going to be great, but at the end of the year, he's going to be a top 10 wide receiver. So last year, the one that would have been the um, pulled the rug out name was Calvin Ridley. Because he came out and he was the wide receiver six in week one and had a an incredible market share and eight catches, 11 targets. That one didn't if end you, up where you want it. If you remember, it wasn't even week one. It was like first quarter. Maybe it was first half. But he just started on nuclear fire. The first couple drives were all Calvin Ridley. And it was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. We're, you know. If you were wrong, you were wrong, and and he certainly disappeared from that point for a while. You know who was the the running back three and the running back five in week one last year? If you want to blast oh, from man. the past, I I won't remember. Well, you you will With after I say it. Mostert? Austin Eckler was number three. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the no, body Jay, shots. It's not too it's too early to give up. Tony Pollard was the running back five after week one last year. A lot of what? Prior, a lot of priors. No, I don't remember that Fourteen one. for seventy and two. In week one. I remember so, watching his utilization week one going, holy crap. Wheels Mike, are what up. was the what was your answer? Uh three games. If if I see three games that are productive, then I will be in. It, it, I'm, it, I'm, I'm I'm with you. Three three sounds good. And then f to actually be out, it would you know, it would take a a good amount. Because it, it, if it doesn't happen week one, don't freak out. This is a brand new situation for it's a new coach. It's a new offense. It's a new quarterback. Like, yeah, it, I, it might take a little bit. I had four games to be out. Okay, give him a month. All right, we're looking at uh, the number one most searched player on the website for our start sit tool, which is back up there. So you can plug in a couple players, see where we where we would have them ranked, who you should start and sit, and it shows you a matchup breakdown. But the number one search player is Jerome Ford right now for it week makes one. makes sense. Because where he's going in drafts is normally behind the auto start area. 
So I'm going to give you three Jerome Ford week one start, sit. Okay. And um, Jerome Ford's playing Dallas. Yep. Oof. They are at home, I believe, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure Dallas yes. is on the road in Cleveland. Yes, uh, and that is correct. Ford or Ramondre at Cincinnati? Uh, Ford or Ramondre? I, would, I will go Ramondre. I will play Ford. I'll go Ramondre there. Ford or Javante Williams at Seattle? I'll go Ford there. I will go. I'll take Ford. I'll take. I think I'll go Javante. Ford or David Montgomery Sunday Night Football against the Rams. I want that game. Give me David Montgomery. Okay, got a little bit of. Uh, oh, that one is really hard. See the big news on Jameer Gibbs? He's ninety-eight to a hundred percent bat better. So probably like just ninety-nine percent. Yeah, he said ninety-eight or a hundred. Yeah, I'm just gonna take. I the just average. thought that was the most interesting uh, answer. Also, you have like, David I'm, Montgomery. I'm, I'm totally one hundred percent. Well, I'm not a hundred, but like <laughs> ninety-eight. So close, man. But I'm not there yet it could be there i might be there but i'm so not, he's you know. like one good sleep away from fully recovering uh you have david montgomery in league of record jason i'm sure you're hoping for that game uh mike what was your answer on that one uh my answer was that one is really hard ah <laughs> uh i think i think i'm playing ford and then one flex question jerome ford against uh dallas or jsn against denver uh jsn against uh in man. a full ppr it's, it's funny because you've got Sertan, who's probably going to be more focused towards DK Metcalf. Metcalf. Yeah. I think I'd go JSN there. Uh, I would be on the watch for the Tyler Lockett news. Just make sure that – like like if Tyler Lockett, if there's, there's still some questions about is he fully As healthy. As of right now, it seems like he's fully ready to yes. go and that yeah, it was but better than like the rest. Things could happen throughout the week that might – James Make it said. easy. Yeah. Now, if it's a difficult question, what's your answer? If, as in, <laughs> as in, there's nothing there. It's just everyone's full goal. Everyone's yeah. as full in like go. the question. Yeah. Well, the the questions always have context, <laughs> but they also have answers. What was your answer? Um, oh, that's a great. That's a great that's point, not, Mike. That's the best that's way to answer point. on this show. Yes. What was your answer that uh, you haven't given? Because I didn't hear it. Ford. Ford Country. Okay. Right. I I think I'm Ford there too. Um. Okay. Uh, this is a good reminder, a PSA, if you will. We all have had uh, times in our lives where our parents told us to do something and we just didn't do it. And so, you know, teenagers. I talk to my teenager all the time. He doesn't listen. No. I try. I have advice for him. I've lived life. Right. You know what I mean? He, I've done all the years he's done. And I was just dumb as he can sometimes be, um, not always. But sometimes it goes in one ear and out the other, and that's what probably this advice right here is going to be. But I'm going to try it anyway. Okay. From from the dad of the show. All right. Please, Foot Clan, fantasy football players of the world, do your best not to lose your mind on week one. Do your best uh. not to react to I'm such already done listening. a great degree what did he that say? you lose yeah. your mind. <laughs> if DK Metcalf gets shut down by Sertan <laughs> on week one, his season's not over and he wasn't the worst pick you've ever made. Okay? Huh? And if Kyron struggles against the defensive front, despite my pre priors, uh, he's not the worst player that's ever played. What I know is that we will know exactly did, did who, that the, process? who the best player this season will be after week one. And who and it whatever happens week one just copy paste the rest of the season. We're, this is year ten, and I've yet to see anybody follow this advice. But I'm going to try it again. You know what I mean? The heart wants just what the heart wants. Just try to calm down. Maybe what you need to do. I lost. I, I lost week one last year. By the way, I lost week one. I'm, right. the, I'm the champion of the league, Jason. Still. Not Did you listening. remember that still last part? I still can't hear you. Mm -hmm. um, must be a microphone problem or something. Um, I. I had a point. I forgot it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, be honest. Okay. Yeah. No, that's, uh, that's okay. Um, we'll wrap it up today. We got more matchup previews Thursday and Friday. Cause we've got football this week, boys. And then join the foot.com. Come check out our community, all the in season tools head over there. All right. I'm excited tomorrow. 
YouTube. That's all I'm saying. Just come hang out. See you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.